Hello everyone, welcome. I hope everyone's having a great afternoon or morning, depending on everyone is joining us. I think we'll give a couple minutes just to wait for everyone to, to filter in. We'll start in a few minutes time. But in the meantime, we'd love to see in the chat, you'll see in your right hand side of your screen where everyone is joining us from. Nice. Draper, Utah. Got some nice. Utahns in the house. A lot of Utahs. Miami representing. Sunny San Diego. The Bay. People from all over the place. San Diego, the Bay. All of our cool markets here. Awesome. We'll give it a minute or two just to let people come in. 33, 35, 36. Uh oh. Yes, definitely Yankees. I used to live in New York City, so once a place I used to call home. Doing all the construction in New York City, huh? We needed it there. <laughs> Seattle. Okay, great. I feel like 37 is a good amount of people. I think ready to get started. How are you feeling about it, Tana? Let's do it. I'm excited. Let's do it. Well, welcome everyone to our Belong webinar focused on home renovations and how to maximize your home and take it to the next level. I think investing in upgrades for your home be it a rental, vacation home, or residential home can be quite an intimidating process. But please don't stress, we're here to talk to you for the next 30 minutes for the ins and out of what to do and how to focus on it. My name is Alex. I am the GM of large projects focused on the growth of the construction side at Belong. And I am joined today by Tana, who leads our construction team. Tana has over 10 years of experience in the construction business. So I think it's safe to say that we are in very good hands here. Thanks, Alex. Happy to be here. It's uh, been incredibly exciting and rewarding working and leading our construction team at Belong. And uh, I'm excited to speak with all of you today on how to maximize the return on the biggest investment for most people, right? Your home. So. Wow. It is great to have you here. Just some housekeeping before we get into it. We will plan to spend around 10 to 15 minutes just giving an overview of when to think about home renovations and why you should start caring about them. Then we'll dive in and assess how to think about ROI when it comes to home repairs. We will address a couple ways you can start thinking and financing projects. And then we'll open up to any additional questions from the group. Feel free to submit some questions along the way using the chat function on the right of your screen. Our moderators can see them and we'll flag them to us at the end. And then for any more nuanced questions, that are a bit more specific to your individual homes, we are happy to follow up offline and set up some time for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. So with the housekeeping out of the way, let's dive straight into it. Starting a home renovation project can be quite intimidating, Tanner. So when does it make sense to start thinking about one? Well, Alex, uh, there's a couple of things you wanna consider here uh, with the first being you know, the state of your home. Every home is different, right? So what is your home condition like and what is the year it was built or when was it last renovated? Right. So as we know, every home, like I mentioned, is different. Right? People have uh, different um, goals in, in what they want to do with their home. And so older homes obviously have older utilities and internals. So updating your plumbing, your electrical, your AC units, your water heaters are some examples to help increase uh, the value and will also make living in the home much more enjoyable as well. Right. Um, for homes that have already had, you know, the necessary upgrades or for optimal habitability, uh, minor repairs such as, you know, full interior repaints, uh, carpet replacement, flooring, uh, to name a few, can really make a home shine and, and, uh, and do it at a, a more of a minimal cost. Um, apart from the home condition and, and the year of the home and the renovations that had already taken place prior, uh, you want to look at seasonality and the, the time of year that you want to do your, your, your projects. So um, you need to take into account that what best suits the, you know, the renovations that you want to make and um, April through June are, are traditionally the home building season uh, times, right? This is not only because consumers are finding uh, the money to do the projects, but uh, they also, 
it's it's the time we start coming out of winter hibernation a little bit and we want something new so though this is a, a popular time to renovate that april through june uh, time it can also be the hardest uh, contractors are very busy during this time and everybody wants their materials and that makes it difficult sometimes for procurement of those materials or, or price fluctuations as we definitely saw this last year with COVID and, and supply chain issues that those uh, prices can fluctuate quite a bit during that time um, depending on the demand. Right? Uh, on the flip side we have winter which is typically a, a slower time for contractors obviously this, the, this depends on um, where you live but uh, it also makes for you know difficult for home repairs that are in the, uh, for the exterior, right? You have harder, harsher climate, you have uh, hard ground, makes it difficult to, you know, excavate or get, you know, the right uh, time pending the weather, right, to do, uh, to do those things. So harsh conditions um, can make it difficult for projects to have happen. But again, it comes down to you as a homeowner, what are your priorities? What are you looking at on your, on your master plan of your home? And uh, just determining the best time to do that work uh, is, is something that we always um, you know, advise to homeowners. Perfect. So what I'm gathering is that it's, it's important for our homeowners to have a clear understanding of the scope and what they want to achieve before starting any project, which, which makes sense. I think it's also important to consider the wider economic climate when thinking about renovations. And you know, currently interest rates are the highest that they've been in years. Um, and material costs are particularly volatile right now, especially with the uncertain socioeconomic climate that we're in. So I think it just really stresses the need for planning for the unforeseen. Definitely, definitely. Great. So now that we kind of have a sense of which factors you need to consider before renovating your home, how can homeowners decide which projects to prioritize and which may bring the highest ROI? That's a crucial question, right? This, of course, depends on the purpose of your improvements uh, you want to make in your home. And, and being that is it your primary residence uh, where you live with your family and you're going to be there long term with your family. Uh, is it a long term or a short term rental? Or maybe you're thinking about uh, renting out your, your primary residence and, and deciding to move rather than sell your home. Uh, and so there are many options to consider here, but I'm going to focus on, on what yields the highest ROI for both home value and for rental value. Um, so the first thing everyone wants to know when talking about their project, right, is how can I get the best bang for my buck? Uh, is, is obviously very common. So what can I do to increase the value of my home so that it sells for more? Or, or what, what can I do for it to rent at a higher price point? And we can break this down in, in, into a couple different, you know, we can break it down in complexity. Uh, starting with minor improvements that yield a high ROI and in, in return, we have um, for example, a garage door replacement at 93% ROI. And when I say ROI, it's it's not that you're have, you're not going to be getting this money back uh, per se, right? Just immediately when you do it, but that your home value will increase, you know, by uh, X amount um, percentage of that of what you pay for that for that renovation or for that project, right? So a garage door replacement, you know, four to six thousand um, dollars, you can have a high ROI there, and um, these are that's uh, one thing that's great for a new home that can just immediately uh, upgrade um, um, that and also the look. But um, apart from that, we have uh, siding replacement, whether it's you know, fiber cement or vinyl uh, siding replacement, you can get 60 to 70 percent ROI on that. And um, and for all, I mean, these are more for single family, but even for apartments and single family, uh, minor kitchen remodels are something that we help a lot of homeowners with. And and when I say minor kitchen remodels, we're not talking about you know, replacing or, or relocating uh, uh, fixtures or, or plumbing or, or uh, things like that. And we're not talking about you know, removing load-bearing walls. It's, it's more the cosmetic upgrades or appliance uh, replacements, but um, countertop replacements, flooring um, in the kitchen, uh, uh, cabinet painting, repaint, or replacing just the cabinet doors with some new uh, hardware, those are kind of what we're talking about to get that higher ROI at a, at a more uh, minimal cost. Uh, another real one that we always recommend to homeowners and that we work with a lot, we're actually partnered with Anderson Windows, um, but our window replacements. And so we, uh, whether it's vinyl or wood, we've helped a lot of homeowners with either, you know, depending on what their budget is and what kind of look they want to go for. But you can, with window replacements, you can get, you know, 68 to uh, 67, 68% um, on average. And with a, you know, a, a cost of around, you know, on average 23,000 or so 
um, dollars for for window replacements. Um, obviously, depending on the size of your home and how many windows you need, but uh, that's a great um, investment to make for a, a higher ROI. And and apart from the ROI, there it's it's you. There's a lot of rebates that are offered um, with uh, window replacements. You have low E tempered double pane glass, which really helps with utility savings. And you know those are definitely things to to consider when when looking at those. Uh, those renovations or those uh, improvements. So though these are more minor improvements in comparison to, you know, uh, clear add-ons of square footage or adding on a bedroom or adding on a second story, adding on a bathroom. Uh, what, you know, what Zillow is going to show you is what, okay, the, the rental um, in price increase is going to obviously increase by those. But so we're not necessarily talking about that, but these uh, are typically lower liability and, and uh, make the most cosmetic uh, change and difference to your home so it can shine whether it's for resale or for rental. Um, in addition, these are improvements that take far less time than, than large improvements, right? And uh, additions that we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit later. But um, with a quicker turnaround, we also see less vacancy in the home, which is very important to consider as you're renting it out. Because if, you know, we're, we're every, every time is money and every day that it sits vacant, you might be losing, you know, a hundred bucks a day. And, and that makes a big difference when you're trying to, you know, look at your, uh, your, your profits and your, your return on your investment. So um, vacancy is definitely something to consider. Definitely. And I'm so glad that you brought up vacancy costs because I think it's often the, the number one hidden cost that our homeowners fail to take notice of. This effectively, as you mentioned, is just the cost of having your home sit vacant. So often the best way to minimize these costs are relatively cheap, but more cosmetic repairs, a simple repair such as a full interior repaint or carpet replacement. Um, we can make so much of a difference um, to, home, to potential residents to make your home way more appealing. And so it's so important to stand out relative to the competition and can save you thousands of dollars in vacancy costs. So really something for our homeowners to consider. And then you mentioned uh, larger improvements. Are there any specific projects that specifically stand out to you as being a good investment? I mean, definitely. I mean, we, we talked, uh, again, it goes back to where you live, what your master plan is for, for, your, for your home. But, uh, and we talked about those bedroom additions, bathroom additions. Those are obviously like uh, it better going to increase uh, rental value and home value. Uh, but a very, very strong one that we work a lot with uh, homeowners on are, are ADUs. And I'm sure a lot of people here have heard of the, the term ADU, but they might not know exactly what it entails or, or what, what that means. And so um, ADUs are accessible dwelling units and they provide a separate address, uh, preferably dedicated utilities um, on your home's single lot. So I, I say single lot because an ADU is an, an accessory of your current home and, and your home space. So ADUs are often, you know, garages that have been converted into a rental uh, unit with all the necessary means for a rental uh, with code compliance, right, um, to make sure that you are, are uh, uh, safe and, and there's um, uh, less liability there. There uh, they can be those conversions. It can be stick bills. It can be uh, um, separate detached uh, um, ADUs. And so... Uh, these are an amazing tool to increase the value of your home, but it's also much needed in today's housing climate uh, with, with the shortage of, of housing. Um, and uh, even if it's a single bedroom, a single bathroom, uh, this makes a very feasible, this is a very feasible option for, um, for homeowners if you have the funds and, it, and, if, and if the zoning in your area permits it. And the latest census data actually showed that 62% of households are two people or less. So that means, like I, I mentioned, that's a small ADU or a one bedroom, one bath in, in, in your backyard, you know, can uh, really make a difference for uh, getting it rented or loved, as we call it here at Belong, getting the, the home loved. And it makes it much easier with a, with a larger demographic, right, for less, uh, again, going back to less vacancy. And so and once you've, you know, completed an ADU on, on, on your uh, home, uh, it's obviously depending on location and size of unit. The, the return on investment can be a, a, a big game changer here. So in, in terms of uh, the ROI on that, the Pacific region, although it's not leading, it uh, will average a return of 36% um, for an ADU build. The Northeast and cent South Central US returns 43 and 40% and respectively. So uh, those are something to obviously consider on, and those are averages, right? So it might be more or less in your area. That's why it's important to, to consult with, uh, you know, Belong or with uh, your, your contractor and, and architect to see what is best suited for you. And once you've figured out the zoning and feasibility of your ADU, the next most important step is to know how you're going to fund it. 
right? So ideally, um, cash is king, right? But uh, these are expensive. And so uh, this is a big question for many homeowners who want to do an ADU project but don't have the cash in hand is, you know, how do I finance it? Can Belong help me with this financing? And this is something that we get asked from for, from a lot of homeowners. Definitely. And I think with, with good cause, converting an existing structure can cost upwards of 150K, while a ground up construction can cost even 200K or more. So it's almost certain that you'll need some sort of financing when undertaking such a large scale construction project. Good news is that there are always potential, a lot of different options that um, you, can, you can pursue. Of course, the caveat is that you should always speak to your financial advisor for more personalized advice. That being said, one popular option is cash out refinancing, where you refinance your first mortgage to release some of the home equity you've built up, which you can then use to fund the construction of the ADU. This effectively allows you just to consolidate your ADU funding and your mortgage into a single loan. Benefits here are that the money is upfront thanks to a lump sum payment and interest rates can often be lower. However, this only really works when you have high home equity. Another pot potential option is a home equity line of credit or HELOC for short. And HELOCs kind of work on the same principle as a uh, home equity loan, but allow homeowners access to a revolving line of credit rather than a fixed sum. Cons here are that interest rates are often variable and so in the current climate may be diff difficult to uh, get a good one there, but it's more of a preferable option for individuals with a lower cash flow. Of course, one final thing to consider is that there are often many local governments that are offering some sort of special loan or grant for an ADU development, so definitely worth checking those out. Definitely. Great. So now that we know which projects would potentially yield the highest ROI and a couple financing options, what are some other things to consider before starting the work? Well, I think it's very important to have a contingency budget ready. Uh, a good general contractor will always help smooth the variability uh, with costs, but it's always important to have a contingency fund of at least 10%. Um, often there's unforeseen issues, change orders, uh, uh, you know, that can arise when you break ground or open up walls that were, you know, unforeseen. And so it's important to be prepared for this. Definitely. And on the subject of a good GC, are there any easy ways you can help separate the bad from the good to the great? Yeah, finding a good general contractor can be really hard. I'm sure a, a lot of uh, you have, have uh, um, been faced with that. And I encourage you all to ask questions and assess their credentials. That's very important. So do they have a certificate of insurance that they can add you on as a certificate holder? Uh, do they have, what are their reviews like online? Do they have great reviews? Um, do they have references from past clients? These are just uh, a few important questions to ask that because uh, you do not want to start your project and get a quarter of the way through with major regret and even potential litigation. Definitely. And I think this kind of brings us quite nicely to belong. Um, I think the construction industry has been a bit infamous for its information asymmetry. I think it's often really hard to know if the bid you're receiving is fair and if you'll have a clear partner throughout the duration of your project. So for our belong homeowners, knowing that we're here end to end with our in-house GCs to manage the whole process can help give a huge peace of mind there. Definitely. And all of our GCs, uh, general contractors here at Belong are, are handpicked. You know, we have a great recruiting team uh, and we find the best talent. So um, our GCs have extensive uh, years of experience in the industry. They've owned their own companies. They've uh, joined us to uh, really uh, bring that in and, and make a Belong way of having a, a dedicated process of how these renovations uh, and, and projects are taking place. And so um you'll you'll know that you'll be well looked after from the initial visit all the way to the completion of your project with belong i think 100 percent. and i think what's more unlike typical general contractors we often have the perspective of roi on your rent on your rentals so we can help maximize your rent and then manage your home while you're renting the home so really the incentives are perfectly aligned not to mention that belong does offer financing options to help with those slightly larger projects as well I know that we are getting a bit close-ish to time, so would love to open up to any questions we have. Let me have a look through the chat. I think, uh, let's see, I think we had one, Alex, on as to why uh, the reason the garage door replacement um, gets such a high ROI, I can take that. 
Um, well, we're, we're looking at it, you know, from a perspective, if you go to your home and you want to get an appraisal on your home, right? And uh, they're, they're walking through it. It's not 2008 anymore where they, some, some people had uh, appraisers in their back pocket. These are very unbiased now. Um, and so an appraiser, what, what are they looking for, right? And, and so these are the things that they're, they're going to be uh, indicating on there for the, for the value. And so when they, you know, in a garage door receives such a, a high ROI, I mean, you can go on and Google and, and look at these things. There's, there are more than we just mentioned, but uh, garage door replacements aren't a big cost, right? So it's not like even for siding replacement, like we mentioned on average is, you know, 20 to 30,000 bucks. Um, garage door replacement is, is a lot less. So you can recoup that money faster due to uh, the easeability, you know, just getting it done and, and spending uh, uh, less money. And, and it's obviously not uh, a return of, you know, hundred thousands of dollars, but a few grand, you know, can really recoup that. And that's um, partial to reason. So um, appraisers, what are they looking for uh, and cost of that project and what the return is? Great, thanks for that. And then it looks like we have another question on financing from Denise, which I can take. So yeah, what sort of financing options does Belong offer for in-network and out-of-network projects? Belong offers as a couple different options, depending or not if, if you're planning to, to rent your home with Belong or, or not. Uh, if you are, we offer a feature called Split It, which effectively allows you to split any payments into up to 12 months worth of installments. So that often has been a really big help for our homeowners. If you are not planning to rent your home afterwards, we of course would love to help you with any of your projects. Uh, we usually can just tailor a plan to your specific needs. So I would suggest just getting in contact with us there and we can come up with a more personalized finance option for you there. I think we have a couple more questions. Tan, I think it's a good one for you is how much percentage should uh, GCs charge in, in, in typically? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can take that one. So uh, a big thing to consider here is, is well, GCs got to make money, right? They're in the, they're in, they're still in a business of making money, but that should not mean that you should pay over market rate. What uh, the approach that we've taken here at Belong is that we have a, a, a large network, right? So we um, always want to char charge a fair market rate and want to be better than that. But we're also, you know, we, we take pride in our work. We guarantee the quality. We, uh, so it, just because you're maybe not getting the cheapest option, it, you're going to get, you know, transparency and those things. So I think that that's important to see with, with general contractors. And when it comes to percentage, well, it's not like you just go hire out a vendor and then charge up charge, you know, 20% to make your, your money. Um, the approach is that we work with a lot of uh, really quality vendors. We have a vendor relations team and we vet those vendors and we, um, because of the work that we give them, we're able to pro get a, a specialized discount, you know, from them so that when we can make our money that way, but then also be able to charge the homeowner, you know, the a fair market rate and we don't want to overcharge. So we're not overcharging. And again, we have an in-house team. So we have an in-house team of general contractors that are on our payroll and uh, we have uh, pros that are on our payroll. So W2 employees that uh, makes it easier for us to really give the the, the um, dedication that your project needs, but also at a lower cost because we're able to, to bring that those sorts of things in house that other general contractors can't do. Definitely, thanks for that. And I see a couple of questions about hiring Belong to do work. Oh, there we go, thanks moderators for this. Can, can I hire Belong to do work on my home without listing the home? Yes, definitely. We, we take on all sorts of construction projects. Um, like I mentioned with the financing options, it, it may just differ depending on whether you want to list your home. But as long as you operate in all your homes in our, one of our core markets, which is the Bay Area, LA, OC, San Diego, uh, Seattle, Sacramento, uh, Miami, Tampa, correct me if I'm wrong with anything else or I'm missing anything, Tana. But yes, we would love to help with with all projects regarding regardless of uh, whether you plan on listing your home with us afterwards. Definitely. Perfect. I think well, we I had think... one about uh, zoning as well, did we, before? Yeah, I'm not sure if I can flag it on the question, but I can ask it. Um, so you, you did mention about zoning for building the ADU. Uh, how important is it when when deciding whether or not that's the right project to do for my home? 
Yeah, I think when it comes to ADUs, this is the most important thing to consider um, when looking into an ADU uh, for your lot because zoning permissions in each area vary um, uh, drastically, right? Preliminary work for this can be done by belong. You know, we, uh, and because of the time frame of receiving permits and, and for a build like this can very much fluctuate drastically, you know, um, uh, uh, garage conversion, stick build, uh, detached, attached. Right, we like to provide a transparency to homeowners in this process, and and we provide a feasibility report prior to you know bidding out the actual project, giving rough estimates of the project, but doing a feasibility report and working with the architects in our network to understand what the your need for your project is and roughly how much time it will take to come to fruition. All right, other things to consider here are, are the building code requirements, you know, parking requirements, uh, side and rear setbacks, building height standards, and um, HOAs as well. HOAs are, are somebody are people that we work with a lot of HOAs, but definitely have to run that through with them before uh, deciding to do a, a renovation. Definitely. I know that we're getting a bit close to, to time. So I, will, I would say is that thank you for all your questions. We will definitely follow up with uh, all the answers to those questions if we haven't answered them today. Otherwise, we are very much looking forward to helping you with all of your construction needs in the future you can click on the link or that's popping up on your screen right now and that will take you to the best point of contact for you so you can get in contact with us. Otherwise, you can always feel free to, to text, call or email us in and we are very much looking forward to helping you in the future. Awesome.